Yeah, I've been trying to prep over here. Oh yeah, we're gonna have to do a, like a refill when uh, like halfway through. Okay, cool. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Joel Benavides on the Squawk Out. It is the 11th of December, 2020. We're almost done with this godforsaken year. 9:24 p.m. And uh, let's see, Bitcoin is trading at 18,295. A lot of volatility. Uh, in the markets, a lot of interesting stuff going on, but that's not why we're here tonight. We're here to talk to my very good friend, childhood friend. I'm super excited to have this guy on. He's a, a an IT pro professional. He's like kind of like an electronics guru slash MacGyver, and uh, and a childhood friend. We got a lot of memories, a lot of stories, and so I'm really excited to have him on. We're drinking uh, Stillhouse American Bourbon tonight. And uh, and so we'll see how this thing goes. Matt, you're on Squawk Out, motherfucker. What's up? Oh fuck! It's uh, thanks, bud. It's good to fucking be here, man. Yeah, man. Don't worry about it, man. I'm happy to have you on. Uh, so we had a, a lot of time this evening to let me take these fucking things off. <clears throat> we had a lot of time this evening to talk about you know what we we're gonna discuss tonight and just catch up. And uh, and I thought we'd talk about. Let's talk about technology for a little bit. I never like to script this stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, we talked earlier and then also like a few weeks ago, and um, you were telling me how you uh, set up IT systems and infrastructure for like large companies, major corporations, sensitive um, organizations, stuff like that, like kind of like high-end stuff. So without going into too much detail, tell me what that's like. What is it like working in a high security environment without, of course, without giving away like names, organizations, details, what it's like working in a high security organization, setting up these systems that are going to, in some cases, be guarding extremely sensitive information or resources like is that stressful like do you ever like freak out or like feel the weight of those kind of jobs i wouldn't say necessarily i think uh the type of work that i do um is you know pretty straightforward for what you need to do either system work or it doesn't work uh there's certain systems uh relative in the industry that uh are, are more uh have more i guess sensitive materials uh they have to they they're not activated but they're emergencies uh emergency uh systems that when like they what kind to, of sensitive materials like obviously like financial resources information i would say the biggest um, one in in these like commercial uh, uh organizations like campuses yeah. and, and and large buildings and uh just uh large uh projects uh the biggest thing is that uh you know my systems always have to work you know they're constantly being used uh -huh. and uh say like uh for example like a fire system you know that's in place for whenever if ever that happens and it has to work so there's a lot of right of course that's of, human uh, lives licensing. Um, I would say those are more sensitive than uh, the common things I do. Everything from you know networking to security systems, access control, CCTV, whatever. Uh, those types of things, uh, I have more than ample amount of time in order for those systems to be tested, for those to work properly, um, and to be handed off. Uh, the I would say like security wise, the biggest. Uh, um, <clears throat> um, clients that we have that uh, that they're very strict about is is uh, um, school districts where uh, they have their own teams that that will uh, um, address all of the uh, the equipment that I install. I usually have to run through them of like uh, having. Uh, um, like I don't want to get like too lost in like the like the technical aspects, but like yeah. just for example, one thing that I was impressed with. With, that we were discussing before we started was some of the applications of the technology because everybody knows that IT technology computers and stuff is out there but like you were telling me about and I don't want to push too hard right mm -hmm. um, so you can tell me if I'm out of line or we need to talk about something else but talk to me about this it's kind of like an airlock on a spaceship 
right, is the reference that I used. Is that yeah. something that you can talk about? Not that it's an airlock on a spaceship, but it's like got the same principle. Yeah. Uh, what is that like for the commoner, right? Like, yeah, there's going to be some techie people that are listening to this. But if you need to keep somebody out of a sensitive area or, you know, away from sensitive information or whatever, one of those things is similar to an airlock. Yeah, everybody knows on, you know, sci-fi movies, you walk into the airlock and mm -hmm. in the spacesuit, it depressurizes, and then you're able to go outside and the whole process is reversed coming back inside. There's analogs to this in the security world, right? Physical analogs, right? Where you're walking into a kind of like an information airlock, right? Explain that to me. What De is that? Definitely in security systems, uh, anything where... Uh, there has to be sensitive information. The best systems are always going to be analog because you, you can't fuck with it. Um, right. Anything in like cybersecurity world, obviously they're going to have a lot of issues because it's like a constant battle of like keeping up with the technologies. Nobody has the availability of being like the smartest person, the best person. It's not like Mr. Robot. I was, I'm got, glad you brought that up. You got I that to one talk about fucking it. guy that, that is just like a God. Like that's not real. That's not real life. What they what well, they talk but about. I don't know if they if they necessarily portrayed him as a god. He yeah. was a member of a team. He, he was I, a leader. Yeah, I mean, but he's absolutely amazing in the sense of like. I mean, he's like I don't know in a sense like the Neo of the group. Right. Yeah, but so, like, there's always going to be a team. There's always going to be different aspects. There's always going to be redundancies. Right. Like, I think you're with Mister Robot. Uh, you're making a reference to Steel Mountain, right? And this is something that I know I'm going to talk about with another IT professional mm -hmm. on this show in the future, right? I'm getting an, another IT pro that's going to come on. And we in, in, our, in our preparations, we talked about Steel Mountain yeah. and Mr. Robot. And Steel Mountain really is, like you said, analog. It's basically a... A facility with nothing but hard copies or like uh, if it's digital, it's backed up completely offline. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of uh, physical analog redundancies in place. Um, before we, we go too far off, I want to talk about how that airlock, that information airlock is associated with something of an analog system. Because there are digital systems you were talking about. Be having to badge in and out to get into this like kind of yeah. intermediate area. I, I right? definitely, uh, so the IT world, I'm definitely not like an administrator or, or sure, in the sense sure. of like anything for uh, SQL or the idea of like sitting at a desk and like. But you do time. your fair but, share but, offline, right? So mainly, uh, what I like, I like to be physical as well as technical. So my end is is more of the physical IT. Uh, I understand that the world don't have as much experience into it, so I can't like say exactly like that's who I am mm -hmm. with it. Uh, but in the aspects, like it, it's all in an essence teamwork in a way that you know you have to have the physical guys in order in place in order to do that stuff. For an essence of like uh, like a man trap, something like that. Um, Is that, that the technical term? I would yeah. That's, yeah. The, that's the one I've heard the most is man trap. Uh -huh. Is that uh, you have if you have a facility that has a lot of sensitive material, or say they have, you know, a lot of money on something, something top secret, you know, uh, something crazy, yeah, yeah, something, something where you know you got to keep it in. Or if somebody in, is an intruder, you, you you don't, you know, you need to keep it contained. Right. So you do have uh, checks and balances on systems. You, you can specify. I mean, usually what what most people know about uh, that type of access control would be, uh, yeah, I work. You know, you, you work in the medical field, so you know, you know, you you badge in. You know, it lets you in. Like it's all been programmed for you to know. Like this person is able to come in, but you know th that that can be easily. Uh, Bypass. It's like you don't you, you don't want them to gain access, but it, in the event that they do, you don't want them to like be able to run away. In yeah. other words, right? Well, you, everybody knows like it, that that is the simplest form of it. It can be bypassed. I could just be chilling out right next to the door, and then you open the door, and now I got access. It's like it's it's fucking simple, right? Uh, with sensitive information, there's always got to be like checkpoints. 
And so uh, when the, there's obviously going to be checkpoints past a certain point, but like for uh, one of the biggest ones is like getting between from an open uh, a unsecured area to a secured area, you're going to have a trap. So basically, is, is like if you get to one certain point and you're not supposed to be there, it's going to lock you in. I'm glad you you like. I'm glad we talked about that before because like I mean. If you think about it with IT and stuff and, and, and information technology, the physical layer, because there's something called, and I don't remember the name of it, maybe you know, there's like a pyramid that IT professionals will look at. And the base of the pyramid, the fundamental level to any information technology system is the physical layer. Mm -hmm. So like that's like the front line, in other words. Right. You know, like they in most cases a technician will address the physical layer first, right? They're looking at the cables, they're looking at the power. You know, like what's the what's the old joke? It's like the you know somebody calls IT and they're like, my computer's not working. And the first thing the IT pro does is he says well, is it turned on? Yeah, right? have, it's have like, you, have oh, you shit. Tried, have you tried right. turning it off and turning on? Right, so right, yeah. I, I, I've done a lot of service work. Is it plugged past. in? Yeah. Yeah, and, and you would, it actually, that's actually true. Like, it that actually happens. Uh, <clears throat> that's, so, in essence, there's, like, protocols. Right, yeah. And so. Layers to the pyramid. Correct. Yeah, yeah. And so, I, usually when I, when I had, you know, some, uh, You're when, a I, when, front I, when, I worked, when I worked residential, it was like, you know, some old lady, uh, it just is some ridiculous, my Netflix ain't working. I was like, I was like okay, well, uh, there's this box, that's where your internet is. And yeah, well, like, a little boxy like, thing with yeah, switches yeah, on like, it, Norm. Yeah, yeah, you know where that's exactly. from, right? No, no, no. Have you exactly. ever, it's a little boxy thing with switches on it, Norm, from the movie Hackers. <laughs> oh, okay. Do yeah, you remember yeah. when I he remember calls the TV yeah. station, he talks yeah. to the security guard? That was a good movie. <laughs> yeah so i mean that's basically like like i guess stuff. like bare bones it's like it, it is realistic in in the essence of uh like i've been there um i got this i'm looking at the camera and i'm like i got this fucking I, piece of hair on my i should have brought my glasses i got some badass mullet glasses you know so dude i was gonna tell you if you wanted to put them on god it's always a big deal like people sometimes i think people sometimes think i'm hiding like <laughs> fucking like red eyes or something like that <laughs> yeah <laughs> like nah i'm just i'm just cool when i do this shit the window to your soul you know yeah. you just want to hide your soul right now that's all um so um do you do anything like on your off time do you fuck around with like tech at home do you have like little home projects raspberry pies um like do you have your own kind of like cable box or not cable box but like um it router do you fuck with like i am extenders stuff like that i'm pretty bad in the sense of like i'm an anomaly of like if i'm passionate about something i try to keep a distance away from it you know my six feet uh mainly because uh, i guess this is kind of like an anxiety thing like i don't, I don't you don't want to bring your work home with you or i, I don't want to suck at it like at work uh I, I feel like i'm two personas like at home you know you're two I, what I, i'm two people two people yeah like oh, uh -huh, like, uh -huh. like at, at work uh i'm uh i'm focused towards this one thing but when i'm at home it's kind of like uh i want to be more calm collected lazy you know all this stuff but at work it's like you know focused and driven and like confident and, and uh all those other things and i feel like i'm confident outside of work but not like that uh -huh, and okay. so uh but I do have home projects. I'm, I'm working on a, a lighting system. I used to also work in theater for ever. automated lighting. Yeah, right? and yeah. so uh, uh, stage lighting stuff, and so I'm very familiar with that. So I've been working on a system of like uh, making this uh, these uh, programmable RGB lights uh, in the house where they have a certain look, mainly just to have you know light in an area mm -hmm. but it would be nice like to be able to program do us this stuff like uh I what do you what so what do you do when you're at home like sex drugs and rock and roll pretty much oh that, that would be a dream you know yeah i, <laughs> I guess so no. right that's since you put it that way i don't I mean, most people just don't come out and say it but that is everybody's dream right li living in austin it was mostly like i would just go out and listen to shows but none of that shit's going on right now so right. it's mostly like you know and like i love sports i love hockey i i can't you know do that right now go to those yeah they have college hockey right now uh but the games are far in between um 
So I'm waiting for an NHL to start again. So it's kind of Would you like, say that all your shit is like public event type stuff? Like that's your like bread and butter? I do like being social. That's for sure. That's uh, See, that's weird, dude. Like I always felt like in high school, like a lot of us were kind of like antisocial together. Like, yeah, we did have part. It was a click, you know? It was a click. I guess it was a click. But, you know, it was like a it was like a safe place. Yeah. And I feel like whenever you try to be social outside of your safe place, like, I don't know, man, it's too risky. Like, I don't know. I guess because I'm an introvert most of the time, like, I just don't trust people all the time. I don't let them in. That's so, like, do you simple. feel like you have, like, I don't know, some kind of, like, inner badass that allows you to, like, be social with anybody that comes along? Or I just feel like I, I grew up... Uh in a way that i had to interact a lot and yeah. so I, I mean my my family is very much like outgoing uh extroverted in a lot of ways you were a military brat right yeah yeah, yeah. what was that like where, where did you grow up uh all over right that's but what every I, military I, I, brat yeah. says but i mean yeah. like you know so um <laughs> i was never I guess overseas. I guess the most overseas was uh, Hawaii. Was uh, Hickam. Uh, my Hickam, father was yeah, Hickam stationed Herbert. there twice. Um, I was on the ass end of of that. Dude, a lot station. of there's a lot of like uh, military, governmental IT. Fucking the Snowden movie, dude. He was stationed in Hawaii for mm-hmm. a while. I mean, I guess him, not the movie, but yeah. A lot of Air Force guys. A lot of a lot of Marine Corps guys. I think there's some Army. Not What's sure. the Mar- oh Marine Corps yeah. Iwo Jima yeah Pearl yeah. Harbor dude dude <laughs> yeah. they they um, love that overseas shit ever since like I guess like World War Two you know so yeah yeah it's pretty it's been pretty dead in the Pacific mm-hmm. not that that would be a good joke in the fifties <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, um, but but going back to like I don't know I mean I do have a lot of projects uh one of the biggest projects I'm working on at home that I just financially can't do it uh, that I want to do it's not going to cost a lot of money. But it's something that uh, I really want to do that will be beneficial for like entertaining and like entertaining myself. I mean, that's like the biggest thing for everybody Mm. is like, you know, when you get home, you just want to chill, but you want your shit to work. And like, even though my job is that I have to. It's all about that fucking Tony Stark living room. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. (laughs) I have to facilitate these home automated or like work automated uh, environments for people. I still go through the same shit. Like a common thing is like, you know, we don't get all these, like people who have to do that for a living don't have all these fucking gadgets because, you know, it's just a lot. It's so, work at home. So usually you just have a computer attached to something and then like you could just, you know, watch all your shit on that. Like I usually, for a long time, I just hooked up my computer to a TV and I would watch that, do computer stuff, with, like games, uh, um, work stuff, uh, articles, whatever. And so I'm trying to make a system uh, for the living room that I can watch all my shows, all my sports. I can uh, um, do emulation gaming with friends. The big one was like trying to get. What up. are you using as an emulator? Like a like a like a prefabricated thing? Or are you building like a Raspberry Pi for? I always like a, what's it called a Nest Pi or a, what's the 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 Raspberry Pi that people use for emulation? Yeah, there's M-Pi like a there's or, like a EP like something like fifty five or something. yeah, there's some kind of yeah, prefab yeah there, there, thing. there is that one in essence, but I think that's that's more like relative towards uh, like uh, specific uh, uses and like gadgets. Um, I have a friend that that he knows all that all that shit. He's 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 a networking guru. I go to him for for all that information. This is so much. It's 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 hard to um, to have an extensive amount of knowledge on everything. Um, I definitely like the the physical side in the sense of getting everything together. Like you know, I can build. I build a lot of computers. I've I've done a lot of that in the past. I've built all my systems that I, I work with. I want to build this other one. I've been using the uh, Fire TV Cube. I was like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, everybody, yeah. everybody has those. Like for Chromecast, years, like that. I don't know if they still sell it, but they, they for a while there were there were independent sellers that were selling this thing on Amazon, and it was like uh, it was kind of like a like back in the day you had fixed cable boxes. Mm-hmm. Well, they were selling fixed Fire Sticks with like 
open subscriptions like it was just like i think it was like it was a fire stick but it had like everything activated and it just i don't know if that's still a thing or not or they were like uh raspberry pies yeah. also with like the old word for shit like that was like jailbreaking jail but yeah it's kind of yeah. like a jailbroken raspberry yeah. pie with uh, or I mean, i've been learning more about those systems because my father i i set up a fire tv for my father and um Oh, it's not working and he's uh, from the like baby boom generation so he's like i don't want this anymore i'm gonna go back to the old stuff i was like okay what are you gonna do and then i was like well i want to fix this thing i want to know what the hell's wrong with this so then i realized like you know i can go through uh a command prompt and like actually see what's on there and like actually like um, rooting it kind of rooting yeah, it yeah exactly so i was like oh like i know you could do that with just about anything but i was like actually like sitting there and learning and, and figuring dude, out I don't know how it was in other parts of the country, but like here in San Antonio back in the day, if you knew somebody that like knew cable or you knew somebody at the cable company, because cable used to have max 99 channels and yeah. it used to come in this little box and you had to get the cable company to come out and put a filter on it that would make it work. And right. And so I think a lot of us had it. I know I had one. I don't know if you did but where where like this like my parents had one where it was like it was jailbroken it was a jailbroken tv box and here in town like everybody knew you know where i'm going with this yeah what was on channel 98 and 99 oh, right man. what was it called do you remember what it was called uh, no i don't remember. it was called rendezvous theater and it was like on demand porn all the time this was pre-internet yeah I mean, if, if people didn't understand, like, the levels we would go to as 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 adolescents in order to see some tit. Right. Yeah, some TNA, yeah. <laughs> uh, it was, yeah, dude, just, it was like... Just, uh, they just won't get it. Like, it was just a different world. And, like, yeah, I mean, all it is is, is like, simple. I, I don't know, like, the analog side for that. I, I understand what it is, but I've never tried to like get into it but like it's all encryptions and like somebody already figured it out and and that's the cool thing about electronics like i wish i was uh driven enough i wish i was like smart enough to like be able to just like set something up for somebody and do it i, I mean when i when i uh, set up systems for people obviously you got to pay for windows and you know i'm not saying that I do it or that it's not out yeah, there. Yeah, well, I mean, I but, think pretty much every copy of Windows but, is fucking but, fake now. Yeah, somebody created a key gen that you go online somewhere Yeah. in order to, you know, get a, you know... Licensed yeah, copy. Licensed yeah, licensed copy, yeah. And, and so somebody, Would, somebody very intelligent or part of the industry or whatever it is created that for you. You know, you have to go out there and research it and and do the work in order to get to that point of actually using it. it it's not it's not you know fucking rocket science to get to that point but but you have to have an understand it's it's like anything in the IT world that you know a funny well, yeah like yeah you have to have a fundamental understanding but once you have like those few nuts and bolts after that it's just googling yeah. right it's like i mean that's pretty much like anything. the industry in a nutshell is like if you don't know it you can look it up and it used to be i hear that from other people all the time it, it's like it used to be that uh you just had to keep it all in a fucking lockbox, basically in your in your head mm -hmm. and like the smartest guy was the most like like trivial minded you know person like he was like uh johnny monomic basically he got all the He's he, Keanu Reeves. He's got all that shit in his head. Dude, I love that movie, dude. <laughs> That's a good ass movie. Dude, that's like the best movie ever. If you haven't seen Johnny Mnemonic, you need to check that so fucking good. movie out. It's cheesy. It's cheesy in a very like early '90s way, but like that one and Hackers I mentioned earlier and uh, fucking The Lawnmower Man, dude. Oh shit, yeah, that's a really good those answer. three movies have like a fucking futuristic cyberpunk, and Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven just came out. Yeah, right, uh, and got, that's kind of like in some, that family. But I have some a, friends playing the shit out of that. So apparently, the fucking soundtrack is amazing. I haven't listened to it. I but. I used to love buying games like right off the bat. I'm as I get older, I'm more of like uh like what Reddit says is the patient gamers. I wait till that bitch is like basically free and then i play it yeah, yeah my steam account is ridiculous i have like 
almost, you have Steam? I've always yeah. wanted to play Steam. I've never Dude, played I it. I have almost 400 goddamn games just sitting there. Have you ever played this game called, and I never have, but I found, like, I heard this song, and I'm like, oh my God, that song is fucking amazing. And I found out that it's from this guy that composes music for games. And this song was on an album, and the album was the soundtrack to this game, and this game is only on Steam. And, it, and the game is called uh, Dust Force. Dust Have you ever played Force? Dust Force? No, no. It's like basically like, like a 2D run through world kind of Super Mario Brothers oh, thing. Okay. Better graphics than Mario yeah. Brothers, obviously. But like you're like sweeping and you're using your broom to like kick the shit out of like that. It's, on, it's only on Steam. But the fucking soundtrack is amazing. Well, I wish it was fucking non copyright. Well, I'd use that shit on well, here. Well, a Steam account is free. Uh, obviously the games aren't, but there's places like you can get a whole bunch of yeah. like games for free. Like I, uh, there's a lot of bundles sometimes. I, I think it, like basically like like how I much got, do the controllers cost? Um, if you're gonna play PC, you gotta play keyboard and mouse. Oh, oh, you could just put, put it on PC. I didn't know that. Yeah, I mean Steam. Uh, Steam is pretty. How much, much do like, the games run? I didn't know this. Any of this? Uh, a lot of them are like indie games, so you can find games as cheap as like I don't know, like under a dollar. Uh, they have a lot of sales. Really, uh, I didn't know that. Triple A games obviously going to cost a lot. Hmm. I, it's all over. Yeah, the, it's a... all over the fucking place. And then you can add, you can add like non steam games to your library to like have everything in one place or whatever. So, uh, yeah, I mean it's it's a very, it, it's the most diverse and and most used uh, program in order for a PC gaming. Um, I try to push everybody towards PC gaming. Console gaming, there's nothing wrong with it. I still have consoles because I play uh, sports games that I can't get on the PC or exclusives that I can't get on PC until like way later or sometimes never. So it just depends on like the style you want. And and um, if you like a lot of the, the indie stuff, you can find it at all these places. Uh, the one biggest thing I've been getting when, into with friends has been uh, the Xbox Pass. I just play with a PC, it, uh, so it's just uh, it's basically like Netflix for games. Is yeah, but like with the Xbox, my daughter has an Xbox. Yeah. It's like the you're talking about like the gold membership or the gold something. Yeah, the, it's, there's like an ultimate Xbox Pass where you get the yeah. The I've never Xbox liked one. the Xbox model. It's too fucking Microsoft. Yeah. It's like you know we're just talking about my Windows and fucking Bill Gates was a genius for coming up with that business model. By the way, the licensing versus selling. Yeah. But, you know, Xbox is the same shit. You know what I mean? Like, um, I, I don't know. I think you get a lot more utility out of the PlayStation model. And there's a lot cooler games, I'm in my a, opinion. I'm a PlayStation owner. And I yeah, have yeah. a PS4. Um, I'm probably going to go with the PS5 eventually because of the exclusives. Like, but the, What's the, the, the advantage? Con- like, I'm, I'm not a, a huge gamer. Yeah. And um, I, I don't really know anything about PlayStation. What would you say is the advantages of PS5 over 4? So I'll do a quick breakdown yeah. for like anybody who doesn't know. Um, there's three uh, companies that basically run the industry now. Uh, the oldest one is Nintendo. And Nintendo's cool. Like everybody fucking loves Super Mario. They, they know it's Zelda. Family friendly. Yeah, but, yeah. but that's like the... Disney of like video games like they pretty much do the same shit over and over again and if you're a fan that's cool it's not my fucking thing not, yeah. not at all like like I love playing them but I've just shoot some fucking terrorists yeah. fucking well, get, well, get some guts thing. on the asphalt I have <laughs> never ever fucking I've beaten one Zelda game yeah and like everybody talks about like Ocarina of Time and I'm like yeah I never beat it I played it like 20 times like I, I get to the same uh, part it's like uh i never got into anything after like legend of zelda like the original like that's a badass game nes yeah. fucking zelda i've seen a friend beat that one and i i just i'm just like it's cool i like it, it is really cool and i fucking adore the shit out of all all of it like all the nintendo stuff but i just never really got into it it's just not my thing yeah um and yeah, with, with with like Zelda, like with the Ocarina of Time, supposed to be like the best game ever made. And I just stop at the same spot. It's almost at the end of the game, and I'm just like, I just don't care. Like it's just I lose interest, and I want to do it again. And be like the. I just like like the old Zelda for like the nostalgia. 
Mm. Right. But like, and like, as far as like newer releases, like I got into the Wii f- for, for a little while, but I don't know what's after a Wii. Cause that's the last I, uh, I fucking there was started a Wii, keeping up the with the Wii U and then it was the switch. The switch. Yeah. The switch yeah. But like, one. as far as like a base, um, what do you call them? The- like, like a, a home home like a, system. It was just a console. Yeah, yeah nothing came after like, like, Wii. Like portable. There's portable systems. Well, the Switch is considered a hybrid. You can play it at home. You can yeah. play it a standalone. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, like there's a dock that you can you can do all that. But are they coming out with anything new? Uh, games. I mean, the, no, uh, like any new systems. Like, is Nintendo have there's, anything? There's, I would say there's nothing in in the works right now because they're so successful with the Switch. I would say their business model is like. If they have something console, that people, that's the word I was looking yeah, for. If, if if they have if they have people, you know, buying it, and it's it's still relatively new. Like systems last for a long time. Uh, it's gotten to a point where consoles are. It used to be the idea of like you know you went from the NES, it was eight bit, and then you the Super Nintendo, sixteen bit, and the thirty two bit, right, sixty four right, right, yeah. bit, and it's like so and so far, and like technology has gotten so uh, available with uh, how how you can uh, play games that we surpassed arcade. Uh, that's why arcades aren't really a thing anymore. Yeah. And so it's kind Diversions of more... is still on fucking San Pedro, dude. Oh, Diversions. I was just, uh, I was just in the area uh, earlier. I, think I take my that. daughter sometimes, dude. She's got it. You know, you, the... guys need, you guys need to come to Austin with me. I live right down the road from the original pinballs. That is my shit. Really? Pinballs is. I don't know about what. What is pinballs? So pinballs is is a, a place in uh, in Austin. They have three locations, and uh, one in Buda, one in Lake Creek, which is basically still Austin, and then one over, uh, Burnet 183. Uh, it's a arcade that is mostly about the pinball machines. And, oh, we did talk about and, this once. And uh. They the original has a availability of bring your own beer, so you can, oh nice. And the the one at Lake Creek they have is a, it twenty one and up, eighteen and up. Uh, they're uh, family friendly until I think like eight or ten o'clock, and then after the words it's like adults play. There's a lot of more like you know adults drinking age. One of the things stuff. I like doing with my daughter because she gets excited over the idea of like fucking you know being out on the streets at 2 a.m right <laughs> and so during the summer when school's not going on Living or if i'm not life. working that weekend i'm like let's fucking go to divert it's like fucking midnight one o'clock we're staying up late we're still not tired you know she's still wide awake and i you know i have time i'm like pack your shit let's go to diversions right, right. so i'll throw her 20 i'll take 20 for myself and we'll be there until three or four in the morning like my my daughter's down as fuck. Dude. I feel like I make good money for what I do. Let's just say I live in Austin. And right. I'm, I'm not. I'm not hurting. Like, right. I'm, yeah. Yeah. I like. You know. I mean, with COVID going on, like it was better, of course. But like, I'm never like scared that I can't pay my bills, pay my rent. So. Right, and Austin is we should say yeah. uh, in a big part of like an IT town, right? It, like yeah, a tech and, town, and it can get very expensive too. So, but I would trade. Uh, easily half my income if I could learn and like do it as a profession of like working on pinball machines it's such a dying art and it's something that like I just I think I like it's almost come to a point where like I probably love it more than hockey and beer and all this stuff that that I've made a passion in my life that I'm just so interested in like to be able to like understand it more and I would love to be able to like you know do all this stuff I don't know, be at a brewery over there. A like, poet. Oh, yeah. That's what you are, dude. You're a fucking <laughs> poet, dude. <laughs> you're, like, you're like pouring your heart out. But, dude, that's true, man. Like, fucking pinballs. That's almost, I don't know if it's like the original arcade feature, but, you know, like, they're, they're they are kind of beautiful. Uh, I got family in Vegas. I went to this place uh, called the uh, Pinball Hall of Fame. And I played a pinball machine from, it was like 1910. 1918 something like that and people don't realize like, it was it was simplistic you just you have the plunger hits the ball up and it's just a, a game of of luck in a way it just it kind of like like plinko it just like bounces around and you get points 
it's not you didn't have you didn't have the, the Plinko, flippers. dude yeah. we, i'm glad dude i'm glad you brought that but fucking price is right dude like that <laughs> game <laughs> Plinko, our price is right. <laughs> like I was always like I always got excited when Plinko would come out because it was like my favorite game on the Price is Right. Right. But I was also always a little bit depressed because you can't just fucking go and buy a Plinko set. Like there's only one place you can play Plinko. Like yeah. that's the exclusive fucking like game. You know, you're only ever gonna play Plinko on Price is Right. Well, fuck it. We're supposed to be in this world of like understanding more and like the availability of technologies is easier. I mean, I've been talking about making computers. Why don't you just fucking make a fucking some plinko pachinko? Well, whatever. there's an app. There, yeah. I, I played the app, yeah. but it's like you know, it's not like fucking going there. Yeah, I mean, and it's like, so like like when we're talking about Raspberry Pi too. That's what I like. The, like for computers, I like it to be very like broad. But but for something like like a uh, uh, like a Raspberry Pi or system similar, uh, I like it to be very uh, specific. Right. And well, Raspberry Pis can only handle one or two things anyway. But in the essence, that's that's not a problem. If you just need a few tasks off of it, you might as well create something. You know, I mean, imagine like uh, having something. Uh, I don't know a, a barometer. You want something very very simple for your house. You know, we live in an area where constant weather changes. I mean, we're in fucking Texas. Like that's yeah. that's. It it's was, good it was, for it like was, it was forty degrees for fucking like a week, and now it's in the seventies, eighties right now. It, yeah, it's, it's fucking ridiculous. Dude. Yeah, I had my fucking heater on when you first got here. It was like <laughs> yeah. eighty degrees in here. I was like, hold on, dude, we gotta cool this place fucking down. Joe Rogan sauna in here. What yeah, the hell's dude, going it on? is warm in here. It's a little warm. <laughs> well, it's good right? now. It's good now. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. initially it was warm. Well, shit. I mean, it's kind of getting heated up, but I think that's probably more the bur- bourbon. Mm. This fucking bourbon. I don't want to like look like I'm advertising it. <laughs> it comes in. It comes in a fucking like oil can, like an old fashioned oil can. This knob right here feels like it fell out, fell out of like a fucking iron works mine. It's heavy as fuck. It's, it's badass. And the reason I got this was because this is G easy's brand. Yeah. Right. And G easy is like one of these like late millennial rappers. And I really like it. His shit's super vulgar, like hypersexualized fucking wop shit right like wet ass yeah. pussy shit right like he's like the guy rapper like a matter of fact i think doesn't megan the stallion have a song with him i don't know how up to up to date on hip-hop you are but like g uh, g easy fucks with all those guys i think i'm the technology guy I don't <laughs> know about dude we're gonna get you spun up on hip-hop <laughs> i listened to a whole bunch of fucking podcasts about like all the shit going on and i was like I well i'm have g- no idea what's going on with that so i'm glad you brought up podcasts you're kind of like a tech guy and you're also really into podcast right absolutely, absolutely. and you were considering kind of doing this Right. And I think you'd be good at it. Right. Like yeah. I kind of, like, I think there's always a learning curve and I certainly had mine. And for me, I think the big part was data and I'm still working on that. I'm still working on harnessing the data and then using it to change my approach. I think that's, that's like information analysis is a big thing, especially if you're doing something like financial analysis and you're trying to get, I don't know. It's just, it's weird. Like, I've had my struggles with this. I mean, you're an extremely intelligent guy, and you are very focused, very motivated, driven. So, uh, you have a very good understanding of, of what to look for when you get into something. Yeah, um, well, so, because I get obsessed. Yeah. That's, that's, I think, I think that's, that's more ADD. That's, that's a common thing towards, uh, in order to, like, understanding. So, I mean, when, when we talk about podcasts, everybody thinks of one guy. Everywhere I go, you hear the same fucking thing about people talking about Joe Rogan. Oh, dude, you have to drink right now, dude. Yeah. We have this thing that I adopted. So, like, I have a partner. <laughs> go ahead and drink. Yeah. You have to do it here. I didn't fuck up. You fucked up. Mm. <laughs> so, have, so I have I'm this playing thing. by the rules without knowing the rules. Right, right, right. So, yeah, that's a rule. Now now you're going to get the briefing. Yeah. Um, 
so when I first started this, I started with this with my homie Raymond Chapa, right? He's kind of mm-hmm. like a cousin, kind of sort of third, fourth cousins by two marriages kind of thing. But he's got his podcast. It's called uh, On Call, right? Oh. It's the On Call podcast. And he's been on the show before. But the first time I came on his show, like I said, Joe Rogan, he made me drink. Right? He's like, you got to drink. He's like, you can't say that name on this podcast. It was on his, on, on his show. And so I was like, I like that. I'm going to adopt it, right? Because everybody always talks about Joe Rogan. Like, Oh, you got to drink. Oh, you're right, dude. <laughs> I gave you that one. So anyway, but so we'll just say him, right? <laughs> so what uh, about yeah, him? I mean, I'll, I'll mention like Jerry, you know, uh, that UFC guy, you know, just can't say the name i guess is that is that the rule yeah you just can't yeah i mean you can talk about him All right, we so, can just say him so the king of podcasts right now right yeah um i mean everybody wants to follow that format and and i enjoy it like th- that in essence is like kind of the this, format yeah. of like what you want to do right and, it's fun uh, dude, no it's i love fun. it like this is basically i mean that's it's what, like a two-person party this is what i love about like the interaction of this is like every, somebody already figured out the idea of like you know i wish i could like uh go back in like a archive or a catalog of conversations i have my friends who are all fucking getting drunk fucking having fun I haven't seen in a long time we're just talking and, and like one person might remember everything about it but the other one was like i can't recall at all like i've been i think we've all been in that situation where we're just like yeah i don't i don't remember that sorry shit and then it kind of kills the mood in this essence of like uh what, what yeah, you us... have memories of partying, and it's like, what were you know, what was that party yeah. like? If you had a, yeah, I know what you mean. Like, if you had a record of that party, it would be like a cherished memory right. or something. Yeah, it'd like, be a cherished like, file. Like what makes us us is the essence of uh, our experiences. Uh, uh, the empir- there you go with the poetry again, yeah, man. The, the... You're touching my heart, dude. <laughs> oh, I'm a philosopher at heart. Like, like that's just something I can't get rid of. And, and observation is, is one of the biggest parts of, uh, of who I am. And, uh, I don't want to be right, but I want my perception to be right in, in a way. And if, if I, if it's agreeable that I understand our reality, then it makes me feel good that like, uh, oh, man, but there's a, a lot of, bit versions of, of right. rush of it. So, What's that? Well, I mean, Sorry. there's, there's, yeah, I mean, I agree. There's a lot of different perceptions. Like you can. Well, there's objective truth and then there's the other Correct. two truths. And it's like, you can be right in the sense that two plus two equals two plus two, but you can also be, you know, right in that abortion is wrong, you know, or something like that, you know, some kind of like I, subjective. I would, I would say in the, the essence of, of not being correct on your, on your, I guess, uh, ideology but more than more of like your observation was accurate uh, yeah was accurate. i like that i like I, that. I wouldn't say it's like uh generalization a lot of people it's a lot of people hate generalizations nowadays uh i i feel like they're important obviously like it's like it's kind of a stereotype through generalizations but i just don't think uh i think i think that people put too much effort in their emotions when trying to understand something dude let's just skip right to the end of the podcast and start talking about politics and religion (laughs) (laughs) yeah let's 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 fucking ruin all the vibe right now no you know what like i actually have politics and religion written down but it's right at the end because i'm like because you know like if you start with that like the whole podcast will always be about on call podcast is like in many cases about Nah, I should be more fair with them. But a lot of the times they talk we, about we religion. Could, we could fucking be here all day. But yeah, uh, but I mean, no, dude, we're literally like there's fucking thirty things on this list, and we're like we're like five down. So, <laughs> well, I'm also trying to like feed off of you. You know, I want to do this. So I'm like trying to remember in my head. I was like, what's on that list? Let's no, let's- yeah, dude. Well, there's so many things. Like going to your point about like setting up like a podcasting setup. 
you know, like that thing up there, you know, the flat screen was an adaptation to something I needed. And then it went on the Fritz this week. So I, I don't have that, but that was meant to provide you with feed with this screen. You know what I mean? Well, I kind of have to have that screen up. It's well, just like different things that you pick up along the way, well, but as, it's, you're as never your, done. As your IT guy, I can come in here and I can fix that for you. Oh, yeah, dude, I appreciate it, that. Take a look out. at that fucking tube. I already tube. told you I'm going to, we're going to set up uh, this, uh, this smart home for you, this automated system. Oh, yeah, yeah, dude. Awesome That'll stuff. be awesome, dude. I'll be excited Absolutely. to have that. Like, it, it, it would be really nice for you to be happy. Going back you know? to that Tony Stark setup, dude. <laughs> You're literally in my fucking garage, I, uh, Tony Stark garage. I want to facilitate a world where uh, um, I'm very uh, altruistic, that everybody is happy, and then maybe one day I'll find that happiness but right now what makes me happy is other people being happy dude the the last when you lived in san antonio mm -hmm. we we used to go drinking a lot right like back in the day like well i'm thinking circa 2006 2009 when we were, when we were young men yeah yeah when we were young men we used the, to drink a lot the future's ahead of us and we you would always bring up altruism Always. Yeah, you I, always I bring have a tattoo to my fucking skin. I didn't know that. I didn't know you got an altruism yeah, tattoo. Uh, uh, our, our buddy Joey, Mr. Leo Lowe. Uh -huh. um, he's been doing most of my tattoos, by the way. He's uh, kind of an altruistic philosophical guy, too, Joey. Shout very, out to Joey. Yeah, I fucking love the dude. He, he's my ho fucking homeboy. Um, Sorry, Leo Lowe. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he's been doing uh, most of my work lately. Like... My beer, I don't know if you can see it, but anyways. Uh, and yeah, uh, do you, by the way, we should shoot out his fucking, does he, where does he do his advertisements on Instagram? Uh, yeah, uh, on Instagram, I think that's the best way to, to see his work. Uh, I think it's, uh, Lilo Joey Molina. I'll find out right now. Yeah, L-E-O, was it Lilo? Yeah, L-E-O-L-O, -O. um, and, uh. He's still working, I believe, over at uh, True Blue downtown. Yeah, he's uh, at L E O L O underscore Molina, M O L I N A. So Leolo underscore Molina. Yeah, but yeah, that's it, his 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 tattoo page. He does cool uh, shit. You're you're on here, right? Is that what I just saw? Did I see that robot girl? He, yeah, that's 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 the, you, huh? Yeah, uh, um, that one's very pinball inspired. And um, I think what I like about him artistically, I mean, I have my problems with art. We won't get into that. That's yeah. not like political shit, but. Uh, well, yeah, like, like uh, there's a lot of politics in tattoo. All, this is something I talked yeah, to Bob about yeah, when he came on the, yeah. on the show. Is like all, the all my friends are, are artists. Which and means I, they're all politicians. Yeah, and, <laughs> <laughs> yeah probably. And I, I have an artistic side, but I'm more of a technical, I'm an analytical mind. And like when we were talking earlier about like you're joking and I was like all serious. I was like, no, man, it was like, no, I was, I was joking, but I liked the way that you were serious. I was like, oh, well, shit. So like just like talking, I was like, I'm just so used to like a certain idea of like processing things. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel like everyone around is, is so free in thought, so free in nature. And in an essence, I am that way, but not as 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 much. And so it's it's very nice to have. You know, weed helps with that counterbalance. I know, I know. Have you yeah. ever have you ever messed with weed like back in the day or currently? I mean, who back hasn't? in the day, like the, the, it's a new fucking world. Like, yeah, everything's fucking changing. That's so weird, right? Like we literally went to conferences. We got pulled out of school and went to like conferences about how we should never do drugs and marijuana was the always the big one mm -hmm. right and now it's like do you hear about this republican gats no representative gats he's he's a republican he stood up in front of congress and he castigated the republican party this was like a week ago hmm. and he said we're on the wrong side of history you know not only like are the states that are passing it like collecting mad tax revenue you know there's like unnecessary incarcerations but you know he went down the list well the house right? just decriminalized it 
hopefully the Senate can do the same in the yeah, I, of like legislative. I think he was talking nice. about it won't pass the Senate. He was talking about the I can't yeah, remember right the now, name of the right act. Right now, I don't, I don't, I don't think it can either, and that it's kind of sad. But I think like so, politics should be the idea of like uh, representing the majority of uh, its citizens. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we don't have a system in place in order to do that right now. Um, but maybe in the future we can have a better mindset of like modernization of uh how people are living their lives um we used to be a country of of like uh of like setting a standard now we're kind of we behind. used to be a lot of fucking shit that now, we're not anymore yeah now we're kind of behind but I think we can get back there again because people still look at us. The world still fucking looks at us, even if we're fucking uh, it up. I think, still look at yeah, us. I think we're still pretty good, though, dude. Like, I mean, no, I'm are. not talking about like presidential politics. I'm talking about like standard of living. Like, I'm talking about the people, not in any sense the government, right? Because I think that there's a lot of governments that are better than ours, right? Oh no, I totally agree. But like in terms of the American people, like I think like. Well, I don't know, dude. Maybe that's not true. Because I think about, like, anti-vaxxers, science deniers. <laughs> like, I think about a lot of people, and I'm like, maybe we're not the greatest people. But, like, you know, I think there's a lot of pretty decent Americans out there that are pretty cool. I don't know. I think it's foolish and very culty to, like, think, like, you're the best of something. It's like, I, I, I mean, we're a republic. We have so much, like, It's nationalism. Yeah, we have so much diversity in the essence of like, when I lived up in, in, in New York, it was totally different. When I lived up in the Northwest, when I was working up in Montana, it was totally fucking different. I grew up in, in Texas. This is the place I know the most. I've, I've lived in, shit, I don't know, six or seven states, something. I've, I've seen just about every state except Alaska. And but you spent more time in some than others, and I know you want to talk about some of them, but I'm really curious about Montana, like about the natural beauty of Montana, and you spent a good amount of time there as a fucking lumberjack, right? You know, talk to me about that. There's uh -oh. a, there's there's a lot of hipsters in Austin. There's a lot. Austin in, or Montana? In, in Austin, there's a lot uh -huh. of hipsters in Austin, and uh, they uh. They got their big beards and and everything, and then and they and they wear, they wear the plaid, they wear the flannel, and I'm offended cause, because that's uh, that's my uniform. That that's 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 the colors of my people. You're talking about lumberjacks. Yes. Yeah. And you know I cut down trees for a living, and then you come over here trying to look cool. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> dude, I have like two flannels that I'm no. very, very attached <laughs> no, to. Dude. I'm, I'm totally fucking kidding. Like it's, uh, uh, everybody thinks like we're, we're all like this Quebecois, uh, like uh, um, French Canadian lumberjacks. Like, that's hold not... on, hold on, hold on, back up. Yeah, Quebecois, Quebecois. It's like Quebec, like like the the French. It's a Canadian slang. French version of what? Cool yeah. So, or? so no, no, no. Quebecian, like, uh, like, it's the. It's a Canadian slang word. Like, uh, I'm trying to understand. It's basically like, I guess, French or like the French slang towards like being from Quebec. So everybody, when they think of lumberjacks, they think of like the, I guess, the wooded. Quebec area of, of oh okay yeah. all right okay so all right. uh, so that's where right, that's continue. where the flannel comes from yeah like we don't I didn't fucking wear flannel I had a I it was a construction site basically I had a right hard but hat. it's cold yeah right yeah, it's I, like the I had a ideal hard shirt hat. I had fucking Kevlar chaps so I don't fucking cut on my legs accidentally and you were and, out there doing contracts to clear wooded areas right yeah so I worked uh for um. Um, I worked with a group that was contracted out with uh, National Park Services, Forest Services, and the other like state-run, federal-run organizations, or like uh, I, I guess like property owners in the area of like trying to clear stuff. Um, I was fortunate enough to be selected for a uh, Sawyer team, 
which is a fancy word for cutting down trees. Mm. <laughs> so um, it was one of the most uh, amazing experiences in my life and also one of the worst experiences in my life all at the same time. And that's since like, I love the outdoors and afterwards it's like, I love civilization more. But like to cut down something so old or so big and like hearing the thud and like knowing that did you ever feel guilty like i'm cutting down this oh, beautiful fuck no. oh, okay no, no. <laughs> like um have a it, tree hugger moment no, no, no. It, it, it was i mean there was tree huggers like it was just a lot of like outdoorsy kids. there were tree huggers cutting the trees down like amongst y'all in a way yeah i mean it, it's it's hippie kids uh, that love the outdoors more i wonder how love. that works i just didn't fit in that was really the biggest thing to me why um, you were too conservative for montana <laughs> i mean Mon uh, no not in the sense of like regular montanians uh -huh. it, it was more of a uh like the groups i worked around they were very much like nature uh oriented, oriented. uh they come from yeah but you kind of had like some experience with i can't really cite anybody else in the group but like me i guess i'm like the tree hugger dude, of the I've group i've had combat fucking vet friends are like dude what you do was fucking badass is like you want it is kind like, of I fucking want... manly to go to montana and chop down fucking redwood son it is cool like yeah. i will say like the first time i i saw someone cut a tree down i could feel a thud from like 100 yards Fuck, away dude i was like i'm gonna fucking do that and then doing it it's just like well, I, I gotta do it it's like you know i would have i'm so sure with anything it gets I'd, routine I'd have, but yeah I'd, i've had snow fall on me i've had like you know incidences where you know i could have got hurt i could have been killed many times like nature wants to fucking kill you so many times i've had uh you know times quick times where it's like i should have been dead yeah, and I'm not. So okay, what are we gonna do now? And uh, so like nature, like like I've had uh, what is it? Mule deer trying to hunt my ass down. They're all fighting. They're all killing each other in the middle of nowhere. Fucking elk! Is there elk up there? We oh, should bring up elk. elk. Yeah, because the king of podcasting yes. always talks about elk. <laughs> the uh, the man in Austin right now. Right. Yeah, the man in Austin. <laughs> oh man, where like, there's so many like fucking tangents I want to go off later. I want to talk about like the fucking joke you played on me about oh, yeah, Joe from Austin, is, uh... right? But um, there's a there's another famous person that we're kind of close to in conversation right now, and that's you're gonna know who I'm talking about as soon as I bring this up. But it's probably the most famous lumberjack ever. And who's that? Uh, me? <laughs> <laughs> no, dude. Fucking um, Travis Walton. He was a lumberjack. Yeah. The guy that got fucking up, uh, uh, abducted by aliens and ended up allegedly yes. ended okay. up. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now fire in the sky was made correct. about him. Yeah yeah dude did you ever see any weird shit out there like on that note you know lights in the fucking distance so or strange had, creatures so i had this conversation with my father when i was leaving to montana everyone was like why are you doing this is like well i have to do it i want to do it and then at the end i was like why did i do this? i never asked you that question you know why why because i knew it was fucking badass <laughs> like who wouldn't want to go fucking anyway it, sorry the, the pill to it is like awesome and i don't know like if it works for somebody it works it just didn't work for me and i i i don't regret the the uh the experience but um yeah. it was a good lesson in the sense of like understanding who i am it i feel the same way about the military it was badass like i had a lot of fun doing it it's not something that i could have you know i was ready to leave two years in you know what i mean but still two years in like i knew that it was a, a cool experience yeah i want to i want to get back on on this uh yeah yeah I continue much beer. can i can i can i pee real quick yeah man oh uh, yeah uh, <laughs> go ahead yeah so uh fuck dude you're the first one that's done this to me <laughs> yeah no maybe not i don't know so it's all, it's all well let's see we're we're at about 59 minutes we're gonna do about another 30 minutes go ahead yeah. all right 
Wow. So that threw me off. Um, so with regard to Matt, fuck, man, I haven't been solo since the fucking block squawk days. Back before squawk out was squawk out. For those of you who are relatively new, it was called block squawk. And the reason why, like, all this financial data is up is because I haven't fucking removed it yet because I'm lazy. But uh, basically, I was doing a financial stream. Uh, and I was doing something that I think was a little played out. Um, and I, I guess it was a story here, but I'm not going to finish it. Anyway, like, I used to do this solo, and I was bad at it. And so that's why I picked up like the podcast format. Um, but getting back on target, yeah, I was talking to Matt about like uh, Travis Walton. For those of you who don't know, Travis Walton is like uh, like this guy who took a lie detector. Like his story is rock solid, almost as rock solid as um, Bob Lazar. If you know who Bob Lazar is, it's like really uh, plausible once you consider all the details. And he was a lumberjack and he was out there and he got fucking abducted by aliens, had a crazy story. Movie Fire in the Sky is like uh, made after his story, but it's not accurate. And we should like, I I think that's this is a good idea to talk about how inaccurate the movie is compared to uh, what the truth is, because I've gone on the Internet. I've read his personal accounts. I've read uh, uh or I've seen videos where he talks about like the differences between the movie and what actually happened. And I think one of the biggest differences between the Travis Walton story as it's portrayed in fire in the sky and the, the, the true story that he'll tell you like in personal interviews and stuff is that yes, there were these gray style aliens that were present on the ship when he woke up that's what he saw they were fucking they had like some fucking thing across his chest and they were looking at instruments and messing with with him you know like on the examination table but in the personal interview in the true account those gray aliens after they ran away like he found his way towards the control area of the ship and there were some other people that walked into the cockpit or like the bridge or command center or whatever of the ship and they were human and they were wearing like a spacesuit. And, uh, and so I'm talking about Travis Walton. No, I know. I know. I and, remember, I remember the movie. and so in the, in this story, he, he follows them because he thinks like he's being rescued and probably not a lot not a lot of people that just follow the movie or follow it like on a cursory level know this he follows these humans out because he figures oh somebody's here to rescue me and they lead him out of the ship and he realizes that he's in some kind of like mothership and the walls on the interior of the ship are illuminated very brightly like he had to squint his eyes coming out of this dark ufo he squints his eyes and the walls of the ship are illuminated by this like flexible OLED kind of like equipment. Like in other words, like the walls are curved and illuminated and it doesn't seem like the light is coming from anywhere. And he follows these humans out through a door, right? Which is presumably the bay of the mothership into like some room. And they like convince him to lay down on another fucking gurney and they put like a gas mask on him and he passes out. In the movie, like he just passes out when the greys ma- gas him. But in the <laughs> right, these guys right here, <laughs> these guys. But in the in in the real story, he fucking you know he's masked by humans, which leads to the question, you know, if like the fucking lie detector test is accurate and he was telling the truth you know there's human looking aliens amongst those grays and i've had like fucking two generous servings of bourbon now so, and so i'm fucking talking crazy no, shit. No, no no you're 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 wasting time for the fact that uh, i'm a tiny man and i have a tiny bladder so um you know i like beer more than i like liquor so there's more volume in my body right now yeah and i'm dude. not as drunk but just as happy so uh i i so 
when we were talking uh, about like Montana. A, yes, well, we're talking about Montana. Uh-huh. Uh, well, I mean, we'll, we'll go back. I want to go back to the aliens for sure. And like mm-hmm. conspiracy theories and all yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah. It's fucking fun. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so uh, my, my father, when I was up there, uh, everyone was like, you know, why are you doing this? Is like, you, you know, I was working uh, entertainment theater for, for a good while. And uh, I just went the other route. I was like, I want to do this now. And I was like confused. And, and, and my father was like, hey, if you see uh, Bigfoot, you're going to let me know, right? I was like, haha, yeah, cool, whatever. And then when I got back, he was like, so? Did you see Bigfoot? Did you see yeah. Bigfoot? And yeah. I was like, huh. And he's like, no. Did you, did you see Bigfoot? And I was like, oh, shit, he's fucking serious. I was like, no, no, I didn't see Bigfoot. It was like, I saw a lot of things, but I didn't see no, no Bigfoot. And so, Did you see bears, wolves? Oh, absolutely. Fucking... I saw bears. I saw wolves. I worked how in, I how worked close in the did you get to a, to a bear? Like, uh, were you to Across a, a pond, so probably like Fuck. less than 50 yards. Was it a and, grizzly? And, it was a grizzly, right? It was a grizzly. That's... It was a grizzly. Was a grizzly. And, um, you had... Dude, that's got to be terrifying, dude. Uh, it's across a fucking body of water, and they're more terrified than you. As soon as they, they, saw, they saw us... Uh-huh. As soon as that bear saw us, it was like, oh, fuck, what is that? I'm gone. And, like, uh, locals, they tend to say they're more aggressive, depending on the time of year. Like, the females are more aggressive. In the essence, like, every fucking animal with the females, when it comes to, like, they're young, they're going to be more aggressive. I worked uh, with a forest ranger uh, that, you know, the girl I was with was asking, was like, what's the most dangerous animal you've ever seen? He's like, an elk. And they're like, what? An elk? It's like, yeah. It's like, they're fucking huge. They're fucking terrifying. And, you know, I happened to come around a corner uh, with a... Uh, like, with how a big? Like, how, how many feet on all fours? Like The first time I saw an elk, I was on this phone with this girl I was dating. And I was like, hey, I'm I heard they're stuff. like eight feet when they're on all fours, just to the top of the head, not including the antlers. Is that I, it, it's hard to describe how big an animal is in in, in a way. Uh huh. Um, it's obviously like very tall. Where you you gotta look up enough. Like I I've had a close encounter with a moose. Like I was taking a shit, and it just come over a ridge. Uh-huh. And I'm like twenty feet away from it. And it's a what's young, bigger, a moose or an elk? Moose for sure. Oh really? Yeah. And um. Maybe I'm thinking of a moose. I don't uh, know. Yeah, probably. Moose are the ones with the the long flattened, antlers, long, yeah. and elk are kind of like oversized deer in a way, very elegant. I looking. think, yeah, I think I'm look, thinking of mo- yeah. How do you pluralize moose? Do you know mooses? Mises. Mises is that no, no, legit? No, totally oh. fucking, <laughs> <laughs> fucking no, mooses. Dude, Moose I need to moose. I need to make an interjection, and we have to bring this up right mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. because. Anybody that's suffered through the last hour is probably wondering what the fuck is up with that haircut, dude. <laughs> so you're going to have to explain what to me why you're sporting about? a mullet. Your mullet, dude. Show me the back of your mullet. Right. That's, a le- that's a fucking legit right, mullet, right, dude. Right. So is there a philosophy associated th- with this absolutely okay and, talk to and, me and i knew there had to be a reason every man attests <laughs> to it once in their life even you you want me to get a mullet no oh. you want a mullet i know you do it's kind of cool actually <laughs> See? every fucking man wants it every man so just- and but that's the thing like so every relationship i've ever been in it was like if you get a mullet, I'm I'm dumping you. I was like, oh fuck, okay, cool, you know, whatever, you know. You ever I, get I chicks get checking a... you out at the bar, like? Well, here's here's the thing, when when they got you, they don't want you to be free. They don't want you to be the wild stallion, but when you're the wild stallion, they fucking want you. <laughs> like I've had so many chicks. It's like I was at I was at a friend's house. And it's it, so it, true. It's like, like like chicks will say that they want one thing, and. And and I think a lot of guys will act based off of that, and they're always unsuccessful. Mm-hmm. What the, what some guys don't do is they don't base their actions off of, like, all right, 
let me put it to you this way chicks will say what they think they want but they never tell you what they respond to right and chicks respond to a lot of the times what they're saying that they don't want or don't like i would definitely say in the, the essence that all my long term relationships with uh these women have you know they've changed my perception in, in a very positive way and everything in the, of the idea of creating something of of uh a mutual symbiosis of of one another um but you lost it's, me it's easier for a guy to be able to uh get into what a woman wants to do but i think it doesn't work the other way i don't understand i'm a guy so i don't understand why it feels that way uh to me uh but i but it makes sense the idea of like uh a, a, like you know the 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 chick not wanting you to be free it's like i don't know man it seems just seems like human nature right like they like once you have something on lock you try to keep it there right we're, we're creatures of habit we're, we're just uh we're just always chemical imbalances about us so like it's science dude yeah. it's nature homeostasis yeah. dude i mean so we were talking about altruism i i still absolutely believe in altruism uh, as an older man in my mid-30s i live more the life of hedonism now like i'm in the moment i'm doing whatever fuck yeah fucking, dude whatever fucking you know you do you me, yeah exactly. yeah you to do, put it in you do you babe yeah, to put it in a fucking so, like hip hop term. So yeah, yeah. Do you, uh, girl? Um, the mullet kind of came toward uh, from the idea that I always talked about it, and I have a lot of of guy friends that fucking want it. They want it so bad they can taste it, it's fucking right there on the tip of their tongue. Yeah, and it's their last passion of their freedom of, of their soul. And I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't like go to like, but, but there is something attractive. You wouldn't go that far as a married man with children. No, I mean, I wouldn't say like, but as a single man with like, the only thing I care about is my dog and myself. It is a symbol. Yeah. It's a symbol of independence. There's a different, when we're talking about perceptions, there's a different Uh perception and the idea of like doing, I figured, that I am getting fucking older. We're all fucking starting to break down the older you get. You just you hear about it and when you when you get to a point of understanding like how it, it is to get older, you feel like the the ideas of who you were and how you want to be are still a huge factor of um how you've always been. Like you are in essence of of yourself because of your attractions and your experiences and there's distractions of life that makes you forget about those things i'm i'm not gonna say lucky. do you that's think that's what the mullet is do you think the mullet is a distraction like to mm-hmm. kind of get no, you through? i would i would say more like for people or- that have a lot more responsibilities of life that there's all or like a button up job or whatever yeah. um, well you know don't you think like chicks have that kind of analog it's like like the fucking girl chops off her hair and everybody's like why'd you cut your hair off and then and the girl's like i'm free you know it's like it always comes out on movies that like you know the symbolism of the girl cutting her hair if i'm know? getting down to the nitty gritty of it it's just a fashion i'm a punk rock guy i've always been punk rock i always fucking said what was on my mind uh, I've always fucking do right, what but I, I don't think do. people associate people outside of the scene, right? And the scene meaning, you know, the punk rock scene. People outside of the scene might not necessarily or immediately associate the mullet with the scene. You and I know that because we kind of grew up with punk rock. Some of us more than others. Yeah. But uh, but and so yeah, we've seen that in the scene before. Yeah. But most of the time, people are thinking about like liberty spikes or you know something along those lines. The mullet people is, don't really associate the mullet right away with punk rock. People is, associate the mullet with redneck backwoods shit. Well, the mullet is the new freedom. It's the new idea. I so if if we kind of get into music, I'm not gonna go like deep into that route. 
Uh, Not motherfucker. We're talking about the philosophy of the mullet, right? Hip hop is. Oh yeah. I mean. Oh yeah. So it's 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 uh, in correlation for sure. Uh, Hip hop is his fucking king right now, and a lot of like younger people, a lot of like circles. I don't. I work. I work around. Well, I used to work around, and I, I know a lot of younger people. That's pretty much all I listen to is like the newer shit is all hip hop. Yeah. So I feel like the circles of like rock which i uh which i fucking love is a lot of like australian rock bands there's like uh the the uh what are, uh, the gents i believe their name is wait and there's like uh amol and the sniffers there's a whole bunch of like shit coming out from australia where they're fucking you know outback backwoods guys with fucking mullets and like that's like this is I haven't heard any of this. Oh, you gotta listen to shit. Is this like all underground right now? No, or no, is it it's, it's coming pretty, up. It's pretty prominent, but I mean, it's I don't think it's gonna break out in the states because like that's just not what we're doing anymore. Rock and roll is dead right now. Yeah, it's it's. it's uh, well, moment. I was gonna say I think we lived through the through the outro, right? Like yeah. fucking Green Day, and then when once Green Day sold out, like that pretty much nirvana died Mm -hmm. like that kind of took rock out of the i mean i can think of like a lot of good indie and pop bands that are still very popular but like as far as like the rock that we knew and grew up like you know all that stuff that started with like billy holiday elvis presley the beatles kind of went up through time and then fizzled out like in the late 90s i think it had a very long run it's still there but it's nobody's, not what it was. No, nobody's really doing anything new with it. Uh, I think my philosophy behind it has been uh, really, uh, in essence, it's like nostalgia. It's it's kind of more of like a but a, in a, a massive, sense a massive desire that I've always wanted something and I never got the chance to, and it it's my last chance to to really feel of like who I used to be as a younger man. And it's also it makes me feel good. I, I feel like doing it is an inspiration. Cause like when, when I talk to my friends about it, I was like, Oh my God, it's beautiful. I love it. Fucking you no, know, I, I want one. I want right, one. The mo- like yeah. I, and I hear from guys fucking 10 years younger than me like you keep that shit fucking tight dude yeah i i mean how so, often do you how often do you do you keep your mullet well, i told you i was struggling and it was fucking ugly and i had to get it for this podcast i was like i gotta fucking look fresh and clean i understand so, that so uh there's three transitions that i've done with this so far so this is the newest iteration i like it I like it too. It's, yeah. it's it's almost very indigenous, which I like. And yeah, and, and, yeah, and I see that. So with my facial hair, everyone calls me conquistador right now. Fuck yeah, dude! You got that? <laughs> no, I was. You know what I was thinking when when you got here? I was thinking of uh, what's the uh, the the famous fiction uh, Don Quixote? Yes. Yeah, dude. Yes. I was thinking oh, Don Quixote okay. with that mustache. Actually, I have an old joke that I used to fucking tell. Uh, it's uh, um. If a if a donkey fucked a coyote, would you get a Don Quixote? <laughs> <laughs> That's good, dude. That's good. It's fucking simple but yeah, elegant. I exactly. like it. So. Yeah, real quick to put a period here. Like, I don't know, man. Like, I think hip hop, in its defense is the is the modern day incarnation of rock and roll because if you follow rock and roll you know motown was popping up around the same time and it's basically the same music but you know black people back in the day did it better you know what i mean like motown from the 60s and 70s is fucking amazing right i'm an old man i love the old shit that's pretty much all i listen to what motown no well uh, of course motown Uh, yeah i mean and I feel like uh, guys our age is like really into funk. Like, oh, oh dude, I like some funk, dude. I was at this. Not, I'm not like a connoisseur, but I like some I, funk. I, I was at uh, this this pub the other day with uh, with a friend, and I was lecturing him on the three phases of the Parliament Funkadelic. The what? The Parliament Funkadelic. Prone Funkadelic. No, Parliament. Oh, pa- oh Parliament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
I was like, pro fucking. Uh, no, no, yeah, no, Parliament. The, Fuck the yeah, dude. Fucking, fucking uh, George. Uh, what's his name? This is George Clinton. George that Clinton. Was, that yeah, was yeah, the yeah, last yeah. iteration of it. Uh, it was all started with Bootsy Collins. Well, you know, and and George Clinton back in the day did a collaboration with Ice Cube. No, yes. Uh, uh, so he produced uh, Lethal Injection, which is my favorite Ice yes, Cube dude. record of all fucking time. I yeah. fucking love it. They did uh, a song together called Bop Gun. Yeah. I fucking love that. But, you know, that was, you know, it, it went from Motown. It kind of developed into funk. You know, George Clinton passed the fucking baton in a way around the same time NWA was coming up. You know, which was like that super group with mm -hmm. Dre, Ice Cube, fucking Easy E, all these badasses. Yeah, and I'm gonna, seen that badass movie. And I'm going to have a dude in here who's um, Caesar. Shout out to Caesar Mata. He's coming on and like he's very uh, uh, well read in the fucking hip hop in hip hop history, but also how it ties into like Kung Fu history, which I'm really excited to bring him on. Tang going on over there. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Kind of, kind of along those lines. Yeah. But real quick, like he, like George Clinton to ice cube simultaneously NWA. And then those guys are the godfathers of like fucking gangster rap to hip hop. But I do feel that hip hop like is like in a, um, a commercial phase that's approaching its end and there's like like we're ripe for something some kind of reincarnation do you, do you dude feel like what's going on right now with uh with music with hip-hop is mostly the idea of like what was going on for people in hindsight with uh like hair bands and like nirvana came in and like kind of maybe but may, you know like i kind of feel like this whole covid thing has probably been brewing in a bunch of fucking garages or zoom meetings or I, something i think it's more technical technological in a lot of essence uh, like i i was talking to a friend the other day about it and technological and, yeah uh i think it's the availability of uh having people um be artistic i don't really think it's the idea of that that's the route where a uh, majority of people want to go. I think hip hop is easier than actually learning an instrument. I mean, you got, you got a guitar and a bass on your wall. You play to a certain degree, dude, like, like with techno, like I've been listening to techno since before it was techno. I, I've, I've worked around a lot of people that, they just do beats. They create beats. That's and, true. And, but and there's then, also fucking like classically trained piano players that compose techno. I, I would, yeah. I mean, I agree. Like, uh, like music composition is very important in the essence of, you know, understanding like the route of of the art. I'm not, I'm not dismissing the idea of, uh, of what of of quality that somebody can create that understands uh, music, but there's obviously a oversaturation of everything. You can get anything online nowadays. SoundCloud, uh, Spotify is more re readily available. Yeah, of, there's of local music. bands that are on Spotify. Like, yeah, there's Bandcamp. I use Bandcamp all the time. I don't use Bandcamp. Uh, when when I see a band, I was like, you know, <laughs> if you're not like, on Spotify, I'm like, fuck yeah. it. Most <laughs> most bands I see in Austin, uh, they're like, I'm like, hey, I want your music. Oh, we got nothing. Uh, I'm on Bandcamp, and like, I buy this shit on Bandcamp because I want to support them, and that's like the easiest way for me to support them. Instead of like streaming their shit, I can actually buy it. Did you ever listen to, because you know, like Bob and I and a few of us were in fucking bands back in the day and we played like the local circuit. Did you ever listen to Pop Pistol? Sound very familiar. They're, they were almost as popular as Girl in a Coma. Every, everybody in San Antonio knows, yeah, Girl, in knows Girl in a Coma. Right. Sure. But, but they were kind of like up there. You know what I mean? And like, I know these guys, they're the coolest fucking guys in the world. And I, I think I passively reached out to one of them, but I need to get them on here, dude. It'd be fucking badass if I could have them play in that here. That would be really cool. Like, I'll show you afterwards. I have both of their no, vinyls. They, They're I, badass. I, I feel like I remember them. The, the, the two, like, San Antonio bands uh, that I remember the most is obviously Grown Coma, and then there was... Uh, 
they kind of fucking exploded, and then I don't hear about it. Are you talking about two tons of steel, no, it was spies a, like us? No, it was a pinata protest. Pinata protest, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, those were the two that I remember like hearing about the most. Yeah. And Do you remember Spies Like Us? That was a ska band from San Antonio, and they were pretty big. I was a fucking hardcore and oi. Yeah. Uh, so you know Spies Like Us. Oi fucking Mohawk, dude. Yes, dude. And then all our fucking friends, especially like fucking Augie, was like, dude, we're going to this warehouse. It's like five bucks, BYOB, uh, ska. And I was like, ska's for fucking bitches, dude. It's a bunch of fucking bitches that listen to that shit. And like all the cutest chicks were at this place. I was like, of course I'm going. They're all the fucking like. And then like. When I get older, I was like, damn it, I should have took that fucking shit Yes, seriously. dude, fucking. Because it was ah. so good. I listened to Ska so fucking much, so fucking much now. And I wish when I was younger that I took it Talk a little seriously. bit about the, the tears in the scene, right? What, like, okay, so you already mentioned punk rock yeah. and fucking oi and all that. And you mentioned Ska. But, there, like, were you familiar with any other levels of that scene? Because... I understood mods as to be one of the well, maybe less popular. Well, mods were like a like English thing. It all it all derives from like that. The cure. Well, I would say more like the madness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the madness, uh, yeah, yeah. and so and that was the, like and, a later incarnation. Yeah, and you had the specials, and like that was like earlier shit. It was kind of like the scene selling right. out. That that was way before. This was like eighties, like when like like the Smiths were coming in and shit like that. Uh, if you what? have people doing it, I'd never saw them like ska. When, Fuck yeah, dude! I'm glad we're talking about yeah, this. Yeah, that, when, ska was like a. Uh, We were we were the ass end of punk, and we were the ass end of ska. But mods were the ass end of ska. Would you say where the I, pop? I, I would I would say like mods were the granddaddies of ska. So well, the older stuff. Like I guess I'm just thinking about like the later stuff yeah. that turned into pop, like, like I, madness. I, like I remember when when we were younger, it was like. Real Big Fish, No Doubt, and Yellow Fish. That's finger. more like pop punk, though. Real Big Fish, fucking... Come on, dude. Um, no. Oh, come on now. Real not, Big Fish was... was no, was no, 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 no. Not Real Big Fish. You know what I'm thinking about? Uh, the guys that came out in that movie, Clueless. That was like the pinnacle of selling out for mighty, the scene. Mighty, Boss mighty Boss Mighty, Mighty Bostones. But and they had some bad ass shit, dude. I was selling out like... Yeah, they were in a fucking major movie. But at the time, that was like the fucking music. Fuck yeah, and dude. Boston's are good. They're good. Yeah, They're they are good. good. They, well, you know, it's it's Ska with like a fucking grade A like singer. Like his but the, voice. But, but then you have like all that other shit. He's like the out. Janis Joplin of Ska. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Right? Say, yeah. I, there was a lot of shit going on in the like ah, 90s dude. to like 2000s. And like, oh, you remember. You remember fucking what was that? That rap rock shit, fucking Limp Biscuit and like core. That's called new metal. I fucking hate new metal. We <laughs> had a name. We had a name back in the day for new metal. It wasn't called new metal. We called. Do you remember what we called it? What would you call it? It's like fucking, you know, like preps that would pack into gyms and listen to fucking Limp Biscuit and Corn and Slipknot. Hey, dude. Cock rock. When when we were Cock going to high rock. school, when we were going to high school, I fucking loved that first Limp Biscuit album. I was like, "What is this? It's like it's fucking nuts." And then that one song. And, I will give you the and, album, and then, but that one and song. Then it maybe. was the one with the fucking uh, Wham cover or the. Uh, what's I don't know this. Wham? Yeah, it was. Uh, I did not travel down that path, my friend. Um, <laughs> no, it it was so fucking different from like what was out at the time and then as soon as fred durst started taking himself way too seriously that's when i lost interest so. yeah i don't know man like <laughs> for me yeah, like biscuit was always after that first song it's like okay you know this song is cool but after that song it was like okay this whole endeavor like new metal limb biscuit is like an embarrassment like i just i didn't go for it i was a bit of a musical like elitist when it came to limb biscuit I was all of, all over the place in the essence of like fucking music when we were in high school. Uh, yeah, I you, can appreciate you, uh, that. Like I, I I enjoyed more like people getting me into punk 
like like with uh um with like hearing like you know like dropkick murphy's for the first time or uh dead kennedy's or the ramones like I don't, it's, it's weird it's like yeah i know the ramones is like yeah i know the big ones i didn't get into that shit until like way later on which was nice and i feel like i appreciate music more i don't listen as much as i did when i was younger um like like my shirt now like fucking fear i didn't i didn't get until i was like like a lot older and they're one of my fucking favorite punk bands of all time and 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 uh that shit was in the fucking 70s 80s it's like a whole different fucking uh perspective oh so in the essence of of talking about fucking music history and uh, mm-hmm. music and uh there's a music history uh thing on spotify i listen to that i fucking love and talk back to about talking about podcasts was uh there's uh uh was it joey showed me um uh that he heard from somebody about uh this podcast and i fucking fell in love with it it's called no dogs in space no and dogs or no, docs no dogs d-o-g-s d-o-g-s no uh-huh. dogs uh-huh. in space and uh they start off with uh the stooges and they go through like all these other like influential bands some like not heard of but were influential to the artists that that were big in the punk scene Mm -hmm. and uh they're right now on like talking about joy division uh it's uh this what vision joy division Mm. so come on you know joy division right no i don't love will tear us apart no okay so, Don't let that discourage you. Keep on, so keep on going, because I'm sure basically Joy Division was the band that created the whole like new wave eighty scene. All that that eighty shit that everybody listens, listens to derives from Joy Division. It's like Nirvana before Nirvana in a way. So, uh, well, I'm Nirvana I think introduced whether. You know, I don't think band for sure. Yeah, they they started out as a punk band, kind of like Green Day, and then they got like famous. But they introduced, especially with their unplugged performance, a lot of stuff like uh, the Vaseline's Mm -hmm. and a lot of that older stuff that people in the mainstream had never even heard of. But you can go back to that one album, you know, uh, Nirvana, MTV Unplugged, and he, in between the songs, references the original composers of all those covers. Yeah. And there's a lot of, like, punk rock. There's David Bowie there. Yeah, I mean, it it covers the gamut. And it's all the world, I mean. Which, you know, once you listen to that and then do your research associated with that album, you realize how brilliant... And what a fucking magnificent, it still fucks me up, what a magnificent loss Kurt Cobain and Nirvana was for us. Like, I, I still think, like, when people look back on I'm getting chills talking about it. <laughs> like, like, I mean, damn, dude. Like, John Lennon, you know, for his time was a, a huge loss. But Kurt Cobain was a massive. Well, we're talking about the Beatles. There's only one Beatle that matters to me. And that's George. I could see, I could see that. I could follow that. Well, because he was like, why? I mean, he was definitely like the philosopher king of the band. I I would say he's the mo- he was the most talented. And if you look at at uh, George Harrison's uh, solo career, he had, I would say, the, a, a stronger uh, representation of like who the Beatles were. Well, he lived the principles he spoke about. John yeah. Lennon was an activist, but he was also a little bit of a... John Lennon was an asshole. Of an asshole, he, he yeah, a, he yeah. Was a, he was a wife beater, and he was an asshole to all his friends and his family. And yeah, he shit. was a bit of an elitist, right? Like, yeah. he's blown up, but yeah, I mean, definitely amazing, George Harrison amazing, walked the walk. Amazing fucking artist. Like, don't give me I wrong. like fucking Ringo, dude, right? No, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, yeah, dude, right? Fucking, <laughs> cheers to that, dude. Here, cheers, 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 cheers to fucking Ringo. Cheers to Ringo. Cheers, cheers to Ringo. So, the second best Beatle. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Ringo, Ringo was like, 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 George Harrison walked the walk. But he fucking he, Ringo he was a black was cool. sheep. He was a fucking black sheep for sure. 
I, I don't I, I don't know enough about it to say yes or no. Say, no, but I would say I I call him like the black sheep because everyone's like, oh, he's just a fucking drummer, but he uh, Octopus Garden, you know. He, I like him because he was like fucking carefree and like yeah, you know, like I mean, he was he, just like eh, fuck I mean, it. he's the oldest of the Beatles. Most people like don't think know he's that the youngest, or, yeah, yeah, or don't know that or second uh, youngest, and 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 uh, he had a. A very like prominent different mindset i mean i i i've been wanting to be in a band for fucking ever i kind of want to like you know start a band let's do it friends. dude yeah fuck yeah like like fucking start, start, start guitars are right there let's fucking practice <laughs> right after this so dude. i've been i've been fucking playing guitar a lot since like covid hit and oh really yeah and mostly punk shit it's all simple i'm like wait 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 and like like I've been playing a lot of like fucking Misfits and Ramones. And Would you like ever that. consider being like in a prog metal band? You Rush know, meets Tool kind of shit. It's kind of funny because I've been playing a lot of meets Primus. I've been playing as much as I could. Uh, uh, meets Mozart. Guitar. I kind of fell in love with like I, I love synth. I love synthesizers, and I kind of fell in love with like this new wave of like synth punk goth shit that's going on i'll, I'll have to show you later of yeah like i know I uh, dude hold on you're preaching to the choir i know synth yeah. wave yeah i know fucking dark wave oh, i know fucking yeah. vapor wave like that's another thing we can oh, talk about dude. yeah <laughs> we so haven't cool. talked about this yet no, no, no like like synth wave is um fucking retro 80s meets like uh uh fucking modern electronic music in an idealized nostalgic form right like yeah, no cyberpunk sure. which is like yeah dude it's like it, if you could go back and redo the 80s perfect that's what synthwave is that is probably my go-to for like music is like the 80s uh new wave shit and right now there's i don't know, I don't know right now but there was a time where like a lot of like i guess like goth sounds were like going back towards that even uh fucking mgmt went went back towards like that sound for their last album i haven't i haven't heard it yeah is it so, good yeah well the one song i heard i i, I think i tried to listen to the album and i don't remember but it's, it's that one song that they did uh, what was it called uh New, new dark I know MGMT like because they come out in like uh, their fucking song, the Double X's from the Double X's album, comes out on, uh, or it's not the Double X's, it's but it's one of the MGMT songs comes out in the Magicians on Netflix. Yeah, they're one of those. They're one of those bands where they're like classically trained. Like they, I don't know they, that they went to Juilliard or some shit. Oh really? Like, yeah, and they're like so fucking like gifted. And and they just create like, fucking amazing, did a yeah, did like, an electronic pop like, band yeah. Like, oh, we're so smart, we're so gifted, we're, we're we're geniuses in the craft we do. And speaking about synthwave, synthwave is a music genre. But did you know that there's like a like a, it's not a major motion picture, but it's as major as motion pictures on you on like it's a major indie movie on YouTube. Yeah, called Kung Fury. Have you watched Kung Fury? Yes. Absolutely. In I fact, feel like I feel like on fucking Step Brothers where they're like, dude, are we best friends yeah. right now? <laughs> dude, come on. Did we just become best friends? You know friends? about Kung Fury too? I know that they were gonna make uh like they're, Steven Spielberg wanted it? to the, fund what is it? The guy that played Magneto, he's in it. Uh fucking uh Arnold Schwarzenegger. When does it come out? It. When does it come out? I soon. Yes. Soon. Yeah, yeah. Very soon. Oh, dude. Very I, soon. Yeah. I'll say that because I, I, I thought I, COVID like put a stop to it. No, this or... was made uh, before uh, everything happened this year, and they had it, a wrap like way before. Is it in production? Is it going to come out still? Post production for sure. It's post production. Oh, thank God, for sure. dude! I've and been waiting from, for that like, movie. He's like from some Scandinavian area. I hope like, they yeah. don't yeah. fuck it up because the indie version was so good. It's like, how do you improve on that? Like you're gonna fuck it up. Yeah, what the fuck is his name? Like, uh, there's, uh, yeah, the guy that played Magneto forever, like the young Magneto. He, uh, he's supposed to be in it. Um, and I know for a fact that, uh, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, he like plays the, uh, the president. So, no, that's. That's gonna be a fucking like uh, 
huge fucking thing. Like, I remember, uh, like, watching it, like, for a long fucking time. I, I fucking watched uh, Kung Fury, like, 20 fucking times. It's like a 30-minute thing. And uh, Michael Fassbender, that's his name. Michael Fassbender is in it. So uh, Michael Fast what? Fast Bender. He's, Fast Bender. Yeah, uh-huh. he's, he plays the young Magneto in all the first class movies you ever uh-huh. fucking watch those stuff. But is he also coming out in Kung Fury too or That's what I heard he's like in it. Like, it's gonna come out like it's gonna be a major production, right? Yes, it's gonna so the the original one you know, when he fought Hitler at the end, it was, it was like I wonder if they're waiting minutes. until... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hitler, yeah. Uh, Don't so, fucking give spoilers <laughs> out. Because if you're listening to this, if we got this far... Oh, come on. And you have not seen oh, fuck fucking Kung Fury, it is like one of the best Look, independent movies available. Go yeah. the fuck out there. Yes, dude. It is so fucking good. Fucking watch it we're like, like 20, stuff. 30 times like the rest of us. Amen. Yeah. So good. So yeah. fucking good. Yeah, it's like it's like everything about the '80s that was cool wrapped up into one movie and modernized, pretty much. What's that guy from uh, uh, Baywatch? Like he did the song. Oh, for he it. yeah he yeah he, uh, he a did a commercial video. or a trailer yeah, for it. Music yeah. Music video. Yeah. Um, fuck, dude, Baywatch. Yeah, what's uh, his name? I can't think of his name right now either. If I had a young Jamie, oh, by the way, <laughs> fucking plug. Yeah. If anybody hey, like is in college hey, for like fucking TV, hey Jamie, bring that up. Yeah, exactly. I need like a producer. <laughs> that uh, that guy that lives in Austin now. He's he hunts elk, and uh, he's got a. He's, oh yeah, yeah, he's, that he's, one guy, the king of, yeah, yeah, the king of podcasting. Yeah, I mean, um, fuck, it's kind of crazy, like how much we forgot about like normal life. That's what it feels like. Like Amen, everything man. going on. Like as soon as I remember, I was at a uh, I was at a bar with uh, with Joey, and we were like planning out our uh, St. Patty's Day, and I bought uh, a Guinness glass that that had St. Oh, Patty's Day on it. Dude, we had the best fucking St. Patty's days at fucking Irish bars with Guinness, dude. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and then. That weekend, like that shit hit, and it all killed it. I was nine fucking months ago. It's ridiculous. It's it's fucking crazy that like we don't we don't really fucking think about it. We're like I'm. I always we always have our masks on nowadays. We always you know. I mean, here we are fucking doing a podcast. We're fucking shit. We're like almost eight feet apart. Yeah, yeah. This is an eight foot table. So I actually built this table. Because I was putting this place together at the beginning of COVID, and yeah. I was like, I'm gonna have to have six feet apart. Well, you work in the medical field, like you, you understand. Well, like, I was considering it at the yeah. time, I guess. Yeah. You understand? Eh. You understand? I think more than most people. And so, yeah, that's kind of one thing I want to talk to you about too. Was like the idea of uh, that you are more an environment. Dude, I'm getting the vaccine. So it was approved, right? Yeah. And we were waiting for it to be approved. And like, I think uh, nursing homes and medical workers are first in line and working at a major hospital. Like there's a, still an algorithm that they're going to apply yeah. to the people within the hospital, or, you know, the staff. So I still have to find out like if I'm like at the top of that list. Right. But the idea is that, you know, anybody that volunteers is you know, going to have access to the vaccine next week. Right. So I am getting probably likely getting the vaccine, the Pfizer vaccine next week. Yeah. So, and there's a couple of, dude, even in the medical field, there's anti-vaxxers. And I was know. having a conversation yeah. with some of these people last week. And I was like, nope. I was like, I'm gonna do it. I was like, science isn't might not be the absolute truth all the time, but it's the best possible information available. Yeah, because the scientific process is what it is. You know, it's peer-reviewed scientific data. You know what I mean? It by a third party, and so I'm gonna base my actions on the best possible information. Absolutely. You know, of Absolutely. course, I'm gonna look at the information myself, but. You know, I mean, fucking many worlds theory is a thing. And if many worlds theory, as crazy as it is, is a fucking thing, 
then why am I not going to consider a little fucking MRA, mRNA vaccine? You know what I mean? So, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how you feel about that. No, you know me, man. Like, I'm, I mean, I'm a technology guy. Yeah. Uh, and so. You're a rational person, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I guess I'm for as much like, like, I don't know, fucking drugs I do. Uh, I'm, I'm considered an intelligent person. So, uh, but I'm a, yes, I, I'm a logical minded, rational person. So, uh, it's only, uh, a good mindset of taking away, uh, emotion towards the idea of, of, uh, what can be seen as re reasonable, intelligent, factual. Um, so that's kind of like the essence of like how I want to be as a person. Uh, if, if, I, if I get a little bit personal at the moment, it's mostly like, uh, I feel like, um, I have family members that think I'm like this crazy fucking maniac that lives in, <clears throat> lives in Austin and like, like is willy nilly fucking having fun. Why? Like, because your family's conservative and you're just kind of like no, a I loose think, cannon or? No, I think like geographically they live in an area where, uh, it's a lot more strict like like initially in austin it was like i was like at a whole foods and i wasn't even really thinking i had a mask on and this girl like got uncomfortable so she's screaming six feet at me i was like what i was like oh i'm sorry i'm too close and like she was just fucking like militant about it and i feel like there's a lot of like militant behavior militant got, leftists yeah but i, I yeah. feel like like i gotta fucking explain to people you know, I was like, well, here I'm in Texas. It's like, trying to fucking live our lives. We think about this a lot. Like, I know for a fact you and I think about this a lot. Uh, and yes, like, I have to work around a lot of strangers all the time. Where you work, you have to be around a very serious mindset in the medical field of, like, how things have to be for people. I don't know, like, how many like well it's very cases. similar to the military i think yeah. like the military and the medical field have like similar mindsets in a yeah. lot of ways there's less crazy people in the military i think right. but i think that's because education is associated with lower incidence of men mental health mm -hmm. and you know half the people in the military are enlisted you know what i mean so but yeah i, I it's it, it's yeah it's serious yeah why wouldn't it be? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, so I, I take the factor of me being around a lot of strangers seriously. I've been, um, I, I've worked side by side with people by the next day, I found out they were COVID positive and then mm. a, a, a site is shut down and I have to, you know, evaluate or go know. did you did you ever go get tested in those yes, instances I've been, yeah, yeah i've been tested before. yeah and uh it was, it was a few months ago and i i feel like i would love to like the problem is like i feel like so i, I heard on the radio today working in san antonio like there's very more availability of like free testing in san antonio i haven't seen that at all in austin and i've been trying trying real hard to find i had to pay almost 200 dollars for for a antibody test in, in Austin it's expensive just, just to keep working and it's 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 very discouraging like I would love to get tested weekly it's just this is very discouraging to uh, stay healthy and like I've worked in labs I've I've been around the medical field I've had I've been medically trained like when I worked in in uh, the outdoors I've had to have uh, uh, basically, uh, EMT training for for uh, backcountry uh, living. So, um, I at one time I wanted to be an EMT, so I take it very fucking seriously. And I don't I don't think uh, some family, some friends understand the severity that I feel about it. But I understand. I understand their fears, uh, and I would really fucking like it if 
it was more available for uh for just about everybody you know I've, if I've, what was more available uh testing oh yeah yeah so well i think i think it, uh, what it, it's available but it shouldn't be it shouldn't cost anything well that's what i mean that's yeah. what i mean that, that i know what you mean yeah we should it, sh it should I, be said i because I, I would do it again hopefully but... the vaccine won't be you know hopefully the vaccine will have a little bit more will be covered by organizations and stuff like that because I, so. I certainly hope that this new administration comes in that it is more uh i guess commonplace towards like how politics have been in the past that can facilitate towards understanding that uh the common american uh gives a lot towards being a citizen and that we will they will provide the services that are needed yeah so we'll see i mean only time will tell you know it's gonna take another six to eight months to get this fucking you know thing under control but there's a lot going on there's yeah lot, this is too much too too fucking much it's fucking and on that note dude this is officially guy. This is officially the longest. I've never run past an hour and 45 minutes. I told you. I fucking told you before we started that, <laughs> that I could fucking go on forever. And I, I, do it, I do it on, if anybody fucking knows me, I do it on a fucking regular that you're like, oh, fuck. I, I, like, we've, been drink, we've been drinking too much. We've been fucking hanging out too much. The sun comes up. So. Any, uh, any uh, partying things? I, dude, we ran, we ran through the fucking, the entirety of our list in the last hour and 15 yeah, minutes. Much. I think, I think I, we covered it. I don't know. I think we, we could be more specified next time. Yeah, we um, can fucking dig down pretty much on everything I'm an, we've said. I'm an hour away, so if you want to do it again. Uh, dude, you can come back would, anytime you want. That would dude. be so much fucking fun. You know, I want to do this seriously. Uh, I'm gonna after this. I'm gonna I'm gonna get with you on like telling you like my ideas of it. Uh, I'm I don't want to do the the open format, the the king style. I don't want yeah. Oh yeah. Oh the, yeah yeah. I don't no. Do well, you told me last time we talked that you wanted to have a themed thing. I don't so. want to. I don't want to do the Joe Rogan style. Oh yeah yeah. Drink that up, man. But uh. Um, I have my ideas of like uh, my own entertainment of, of of like doing this, and I man, I I've, I've had a blast with this. Like, I I fucking I always have fun doing this, this shit, man. This has motivated me towards uh, buying some equipment to like get my fucking friends over, and it's it's more my idea is more of like um kind of like a game show, a little bit, a little bit, and it's also like fuck with you, like you know me, I'm an instigator, like. So I, I kind of want to fuck. That's why up. I think you would be a good podcasting host because you're you're gonna dig deep. Yeah. I like I, I a lot of times I try to be a nice guy about shit, but I mean, come on, like I, I we we talked about this for a good while is because uh, I've never learned how to shut the fuck up. So, <laughs> so no, I, I've loved it, and like uh, I hope I hope we do this again soon, and like if I take this seriously, if I actually take my life seriously, I hope hope to have you on. Dude, and, and I'll fucking come on anytime you want, dude. We'll fucking, we'll fucking make a thing of it. All right, Love Fest is over. Squawk Out is over, motherfucker. Have a good night. All right, thanks, man. All right, man, thanks for coming on. Anytime you want, come for back. Sure. You know what? Like, I was trying to cue this fucking music in at the perfect time, and it came in a really cheesy time. <laughs> so let me, let me just fucking tweak this. It's fine. I'm just... Trying to get the drop. It's all about the drop. All right, man. You suck my fucking dick, bitch. Yeah.